Why is it crack everyone? It's Nathan here, aka The Rambling Kern and Head Instructor of Kern School of Combat. So I was asked a uh, very interesting question in the comments on uh, my video on the Leona. Um, basically about what were the hairstyles that I discussed that were outlawed in Ireland. Um, and interesting there, interestingly, uh, there has been a successive um, series of laws brought in over the course of about 300 in a slightly over 300 years, um, banning various different hairstyles amongst the Irish population. Um, so I thought I would bring in uh, a little bit of those references and kind of explain what those were, because um, I think it is quite fascinating. Um, and this is something you do see colonial powers do, um, in, depending on the uh, nation uh, which they're um, taking over. Um, and basically, it's a way to impose uh, their... Um, how to put it nicely, but their uh, preferred um, styles and uh, ways of appearing, um, to, to say it in a nice way. Um, so, like I said, these were a series of laws over about 300 years. I'm going to start with the very first one, and uh, I'll actually come back to the topic of the Lena later on uh, with one of these laws. Um, so, just touching on the first one, and this is from 1297, there was an edict uh, passed to basically outlaw the wearing of, uh, this is going to be a curveball to some of you, the mullet. Uh, yes, the mullet was very popular in 13th century Ireland, um, and it is described as their heads half shaved and grow the hair long at the back, which, as you can guess, is essentially a mullet, both sides shaved, hair flowing back. Um, what's the saying? Business in the front, party in the back. That is essentially what was being done. Um, and the laws that were brought in were also forbidding um, the English, um, or at that time essentially kind of Norman um, people in Ireland from also wearing uh, the same haircut. So the some of the lines of the edict here, um, it was done to compel those Englishmen uh, by their lands and chattels, and if it be necessary, by arrest of their body and imprisonment to relinquish the Irish dress, at least in the head or hair, and that there be no further answer made to the Englishman having his head transformed in the manner of the Irishman than would be to an Irishman in the like case. So even at this very early stage, there was real efforts being made to disassociate how the Irish looked uh, from how the English looked. Um, and basically to differentiate the two. And this is often done to kind of create a case of the other. Um, and this is something that you really start to see as the centuries go by with the continued theory and image of the wild Irish. Um, and this is where a lot of later laws come in. So uh, when we move forward to the 1500s, then we get a lot more um, interesting interactions, especially because of the Tudor conquest into Ireland at the time. Um, you get a lot of really interesting references as to what was going on. So the next hairstyle that was outlawed, um, I'll touch on in a second, but to give you an idea of some of the descriptions of the time. So here's one from uh, Laurent Vital in 1517. Uh, he described the distinctive Irish hairstyle as thus, for they, Irishmen, were shorn and shaved one palm above the ears so that only the tops of their heads were covered with hair. But on the forehead, I beg your pardon, but on the forehead, they leave about a palm of hair to grow down to their eyebrows, like a tuft of hair, which one leaves hanging on the horses between the two ears. So essentially, I would need to update the size, but essentially short back and sides. <laughs> this was often referred to as the glib. Um, now I've seen various different theories as to why this was called the glib um, and there is Irish words that kind of translate into scruffy or um, scraggly hair essentially um, and that's one of the reasons I think as to why it was named that and um, however if there's anyone with kind of a, a better insight into that please do let me know. I'll put up some images on the screen here of what the, the glib looked like and um, we have a really good insight into what it may have looked like from Albert Drurer's painting now this painting, uh, there's a lot of questions about the provenance of it. Um, were these people actually Kearns? However, the 
hairstyles that you see are pretty much exactly what is described here. As you can see, long in the front, about a palm length down to about the eyebrows, quite thick, with the back and sides being shaved. And that's essentially how the glib is described. Um, and ironically, it's probably one of the most popular hairstyles today <laughs> in Ireland. So um, the old skin fade with a bit of a fringe. So really interesting one to see. Um, and another one here from the uh, later in the 1500s. So this haircut was basically seen as a very like Irish haircut um, and it was despised by the English establishment. By 1537, it was outlawed. And by 1570, it was outlawed again. <laughs> so as you can guess, the first outlawing wasn't particularly successful, but there, like I said, there was a series of these laws to slowly and progressively erode Irish culture, Irish customs, and Irish appearance. Um, and interestingly, during these, there was what was referred to as the moustache law, basically outlawing Irish men wearing moustaches. You will see a lot of questionable reasons for this, often from English sources basically saying that the glib was used to hide people's faces because it was what uh, bandits would do. Um, and it was a sort of... Um, hairstyle of a ruffian or a, a rogue and it's again like I said colonial powers kind of using that to go after the, the locals and um, so the actual edict from 1537 and this is coming back to what I was saying about the Lena now a lot of people have commented about not believing that saffron was used for the dyeing of tunics now like I said we have tons of information of shipping charters however here is the exact quote from the edict banning uh, Irish um, dress and custom. So here it is, that no person, uh, the king's subjects within this land being or hereafter to be from and after the first day of May, which shall be in the year of our Lord God, a thousand five hundred thirty nine shall be shorn or shaven above the ears or use the wearing of the hair upon their heads like unto long locks called glibs, or have any hair growing on their upper lips called or named a chromial, or use or wear any shirt, smock, kercher, bendel, neckerchief, mocket, linen cap, colored or dyed with saffron. Now it expressly says dyed with saffron, not yellow in color, dyed with saffron. Very clearly laid out there. Like I said, I know it seems mad that something so valuable is being used for clothing, but the same thing goes on today. We just don't really think as much about it. Um, so if anyone has any information as to what the uh, particular moustache that they lay out, the uh, chromial is, I would love to know more. Because um, I think that was quite fascinating. So to give you an idea of some of the uh, quotes that were written about the Irish at the time, um, so this one is uh, from uh, Edmund Spencer in 1596. It basically says, uh, <laughs> he kind of deplores the, the look of the Irish at the time, but he says, uh, the thick curled bush of hair hanging down over their eyes are compared to a thief's mask. He's also rather fancifully stated that the Irish believed that they had a heavy fringe on the front of their hair <laughs> that could deflect the strike of a, of a sword. Yeah, well, that's just bananas, but such are, such are these things. So going into battle uh, without armor around their bodies or heads, but trusting the thickness of their glibs, the witch, they say, will sometimes bear off a good stroke. Um, again, probably down to this guy's anti-Irish sentiments. Um, so another quote, um, basically saying that uh, their hair are fit for masks as a mantle is for the thief. For whomever he hath uh, ruined himself into the peril of law, that he will not be known, he either uh, cutteth of his glib, quite by which he becometh nothing like himself, or pulleth in so low down over his eyes that he is very hard to discern his thievish countenance. So like I said, these sort of quotes can't really be trusted upon, but we do, as a result, know what the glib is, and it is laid out pretty clearly. And um, like I said, banned on numerous occasions. 
The idea that short back and sides with a long fringe would hide your face, um, I think anyone can kind of figure out themselves is slightly ridiculous. Um, you still be able to make out someone's face pretty clearly. Um, but it was done to basically destroy Irish customs. And that was the main thing. That At the time, Irish clothing, culture and uh, customs were so different to that of mainland Europe, and especially England, that the English wanted to make the Irish much more like themselves and as a result more dependent on England which we do see in later years um, so to kind of come back to the original question uh, and my comments the mullet and the glib um, so I find it hilarious that these are two haircuts that have made a huge revival um, and are hugely popular today not two hairstyles that you would think of as a medieval haircuts but there you go um, if you guys have any further videos or anything that you'd like me to touch on, uh, please do let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm more than happy to uh, do videos on any kind of topics that you guys are interested in. And if you're interested in classes in Irish martial arts, uh, please do get in touch. We run them every Tuesday in Dublin. Um, and I also do have a Patreon if you'd like to sponsor my work. Yeah, I have some very interesting projects coming for uh, this year. Um, and any kind of uh, euro or two you can throw them away, I greatly appreciate it. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, it's long.